In this video, I'm going to show you how to reverse a linked list using JavaScript. In particular, I'm going to show an iterative solution to reverse a singly linked list. Let's start out first of all by defining what a singly linked list consists of. In a singly linked list, we have a series of nodes, each containing a particular value. So here we have a node with the value of 5, a node with the value of 6, a node with the value of 7, and a node with the value of 8. Now the way that all these nodes are linked up is through a next pointer. So we can represent each of these nodes in code as an object with a particular value and a next property which points to the next node. And then when we get to the last node, that last node will point to a value of null. And this is very important in a linked list because we need that value of null in order to identify the last node in the linked list, which we can also refer to as the tail. The other thing to point out is that the very first node in the linked list we can refer to as the head. All right, so here we are in VS Code. As you can see here on line one, I've created a class for a node in another file, and I'm bringing it in here into this file, app.js. And with that node class, I've created a linked list which we can work with here. So what we should do first is just console.log out the linked list that we have. So let's check it out here in the terminal. And here we can see what we have for our linked list. And this is what we're gonna reverse. So as you can see, our linked list is an object which has a value of five, and it also has a next property, which points to the next node in the list. That next node has a value of six, and it also has a next property, which points to another node with a value of seven, and as you can see, that node is the last one in the chain because its next property points to null. So what do we need to do in order to reverse this linked list? Well, keep your eyes here on the next pointers and the value of null. As you can see, we need to essentially reverse the next pointers. So in their original state, they point to the next node, but what we want to do is we want to point them to their previous node. And the problem with the singly linked list is that each node object only has a pointer to the next node. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to create a variable, and we'll call it something like previous, and we'll set that to be null. That way, we can take what was the head, which was that node with the value of five, and set its next property to this new variable which we're calling previous, with the value of null. And then we're basically gonna move to each successive node in the linked list, and reassign its next property to the node which came before it. Finally, when we get to the last node in the linked list, which was the tail, that's now gonna be the new head of the list, and so that's what we're gonna return. Let's return to VS Code now and start implementing our algorithm. Let's get rid of this console log here and let's define our function. We'll call it reverse list. And what we're going to pass into reverse list is the linked list. And as a parameter, let's call it head because that's the first node in the list. So what we're passing in is this entire object, which we saw before. This is the linked list with the head, with the value five and all the next nodes and so on. Now, as I mentioned, in order to reverse it, we're gonna create a new variable. We'll call it prev for previous, and we'll initialize it to a value of null, right? Because in order to reverse the linked list, we're gonna need to take the next property from the very first node and point it to null because that's gonna be the new tail. We're also gonna create another variable and we'll call it next we'll initialize that to null. And you'll see why we need this in a moment. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a while loop. Because what we're gonna have is an iterative process where we keep moving along to each successive node in the list and basically reassign the node's next property to the previous node. So since we're starting at the head node, we're gonna say while head does not equal null, because remember, a next property with the value of null tells us that that's the last node in the chain. And what we're gonna do throughout this iterative process is we're gonna keep updating head to be the next node in the chain. And we wanna do this while whatever head is currently is not equal to null, right? Because once it has equaled null, then we're done with this process of reversing the list. And we can return our reverse linked list at that point. So we're saying while head does not equal null, and in here, in this while loop, is where we're gonna do all that reassignment of the next properties. 
And as well, we're going to have to keep updating what head is, or the current node, as well as updating what previous is. So here's where all the reversing is going to take place, inside of this while loop here. As I said, we're going to take the head node, and assign it to this new previous variable, which has the value of null, currently. The head node, with the value of 5, was pointing to the next node with the value of 6, but now we've severed that, and instead, we've pointed it to prev, or previous, with the value of null. Now, the other things that we need to do in here, though, are we need to do some reassignments, so that we can go through all the nodes in the linked list, and sever their next properties, and reassign them to previous nodes. So remember before we set up this next variable, and we signed it to a value of null, we initialized it to null. Well, we're going to use that next variable inside this while loop, and we're going to start out by assigning it to head.next. Because we're going to need a way to store a reference to what was the next node, which was the node with the value of 6, before we sever it from the current node, which we're doing here, when we're assigning head.next now to previous. So now that we've set this up, we can move along through the nodes in the linked list by taking that previous variable and now assigning that to what was the head node, which was that node with the value 5. Right, so now null is not what previous is anymore, but that head node with the value of 5 is now going to be the previous node. And now that we've done that, we can take the head node and assign that to be next. So we've basically taken previous and head and move them one step further in the chain. So after we've gone through this entire process, moving along through the chain, at some point we're going to reach null. So we know we've reached the end of the linked list, and we can now return our linked list in its reverse state. So what we're going to do is we're going to return prev, or previous. Because previous has become the last node now. Or the new head, basically. So let's save what we have. Let's come down here and actually call the function, and we're going to pass in the linked list, and we'll want to console.log out the reversed version of the list. So let's save, let's clear our terminal, and let's see what we have. And here you can see our reverse list. Previously we started with a value of 5, and then 6, and then 7, but here now you can see we're starting with a value of 7, and then 6, and then 5. So you can see that we've reversed it. The big O. Now in terms of the time complexity of this algorithm, this algorithm has a linear time complexity, or big O of n. And that's because the time it takes to iterate through this entire linked list is going to depend on the size of the inputted linked list, or how many nodes it has. In terms of space, we can say that this has big O of 1, or constant time. Because we're not creating a new linked list, we're reversing everything in place. So we're basically using what we have and just reassigning things. So thanks for checking out this video on reversing a singly linked list in JavaScript. If you feel like you got some value out of the video, please give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you next time.